Welcome to the Marathon Training Series on the Mike White Podcast, where myself and Clark Blunt meet about every month and go over our training progress for a marathon in 2023. Hope y'all enjoy. All right, and we're back on the Marathon Training Podcast. We've changed this to a monthly update, uh, and I'm here with Clark Blunt. Clark, how's it going? Going well over here. How are you? I'm I'm okay. I'm doing good. Not running as much as I I want. Uh, didn't have anything as serious as as you had going on that kept you kept you down for a few weeks. But my knee from I I don't know if you remember I tweaked it snowboarding uh, a while ago and then just on one run I did kind of like a lateral move and for some reason that inflamed it again. So that's been been bothering me. And, uh, so I've been doing a lot of stationary bike, but what about you? Are you back, back running? I'm back. I'm taking it pretty easy right now, but yeah, it, I'm back. Are you doing the same schedule we had last time pretty much? Uh, yeah, I've been sticking pretty true to that. Yeah. So if any, any of the listeners, uh, are on here, I, I post the, the weekly default plan on Instagram and I mean Clark's probably doing something a little slightly different but for the most part it's the it's the same uh and then I know I've been I've been posting runs these last few weeks but I've actually been biking most of them because my knee so that's the thing like I want to be consistent you you want to have a goal in mind but if you have to alter it based on what your current you know cardio level is or what injuries you have going on make sure to to change it as needed um, what's what are your thoughts on the stationary bike i i found personally that i don't it's not as easy for me to get my heart rate as high as i would want it to be so i can find myself if i'm not paying attention kind of slipping and maybe going a little easier than i would running but other than that and also the there is you're not gaining that strength of getting the constant, I don't know, lack of the word pounding on the pavement and building up your, I don't know about if it's your joints or just your bone, your bone density goes up as you do, as you run compared to like a a biker or swimmer. It's something you can't replicate super easily. Uh, So those are the only two things. That's what I'm a little worried about when I'm going back to running. It's probably going to take a little bit to build that up again. So I don't know what are your what are your thoughts on the stationary bike? Uh, I think I think uh riding the stationary bike is is good. I think it's a fantastic workout. It is very different from running. So, I I mean if you were just trying to stay in shape, I think if you did the if you went out and biked, I, I think you're fine. But if you're trying to get in shape for running, you got to you're going to have to work just a little bit a little bit harder. You'd have to ride a little bit longer to kind of have the same benefit it, it, i mean you're just working different muscles so you're going to see fatigue in different areas yeah i wonder if if you if i have an injury like i have now that running inflames it if i can supplement it with stationary bike and i probably should be walking more because it seems like if you're just on your feet for a long time that's that's something different I don't know. I don't know what it is, but just being standing and walking and like if you like, I I remember I did that twelve hour walk and that was freaking exhausting. So mm-hmm. I might I might work that in more. It's all working different muscles. I mean, walking is so different from running. It's it's kind of wild. Yeah. But yeah, it's all it's about finding when you're when you're biking like that, you gotta figure out how far you need to go and how you can vary your your workout because I mean, just like any sort of run you'd want to you'd want to do hills to develop strength and you and you want to vary your tempo so that you can establish your cardio it's just it's very different and and yeah you can really optimize it and be you know super purposeful with the biking but for anyone out there like if you don't feel that's like overwhelming just hop on the bike like any any amount of exercise is better than nothing. When you start running again, you're going to be better off 
for whatever you did before. So you're, you're talking about strength training a lot, like going to the gym more. Uh, have you kept that up or you've shifted more to just, just running? I've just been running. I'll probably, I'll probably want to get back into the gym here soon though. Yeah. I mean, I think the big thing there is injury prevention, whereas it's not going to help. It doesn't seem like it helps too much with the running, but it's str- it strengthens all those muscles around. So I feel like, like you said, if you just work one thing, there's all these other muscles that you're, you're not, uh, given attention to. And, you know, just the unbalancedness of it seems like it may cause injuries, but that's, that's probably bro science by me, but I think there's some validity to it. No, you're absolutely right. You, if you, if you just work out the same muscles, and you let your other muscles deteriorate, you're gonna, you'll be far more prone for injury. So you're absolutely right. And one way for people, it might be a little late when this releases, but if they want to get a full body workout, it's coming up on Memorial Day. So I'm a big, you know, believer of Memorial Day. You should honor the fallen. I, I, I feel like it's weird. I'm, I don't get mad at people, but it's weird for me to say happy Memorial day. Cause it's just like really a somber day to think about all the people that, you know, died, you know, in, in the name of freedom and protecting the country. So I want to, want to remember them. And one of the guys that the medal of honor, honor recipient, Lieutenant Michael Murphy, he's, uh, his name is super, super known nowadays because a lot of, a lot of CrossFitters and just a lot of people in general do the Murph every Memorial day. One of his favorite workouts, which is a mile run, a hundred pull-ups, 200 push-ups, and 300 squats finished off by another mile run. And he did it with like, I think a 20 pound weighted vest, which is absolutely insane. Like just, just those numbers without a vest is really tough. So that's what I'm going to do Monday and, uh, just get a good full body workout good way to start the day and it's it's something to do every year and you can kind of measure yourself too which is which is always nice doing the same workout so uh are you are you going to partake wow that sounds absolutely brutal um (laughs) the 100 pull-ups might get me but well i'll i'll give it a shot that's the thing like you there's no time limit like i guess it'd be ideal you got to do it within the day but uh I think last year it took me like over an hour and a half. Like, I don't know how some of these people are doing it in like 45 minutes or whatever, but I would focus, you know, focus on form, make sure you're doing good form and just, just knock it out. And you can, you can alternate. So like you don't do, you don't have to do all the hundred pull-ups and then move on to the push ups. So I would do like this. My plan this year is to do 10 sets, which it's going to be tough. I don't know if I could get in 10 sets, but so 10 sets of 10 pull up. And then after pull up, one set of pull up, I go one set of push up, and I'll do twenty push ups in that set, and then I'll do thirty squats, and then I'll rotate like that. But uh, I don't know if I can if I can make it in ten. That's gonna be the goal. Oh man! All right, count me in. I don't think I'm gonna <laughs> like it, but it'll be good. Nice, nice. Yeah, you gotta let me know your your time. See if you can beat the hour forty five. That's that's brutal. So other thing I was thinking of over this month, which I kind of like doing this month thing because I get more, more of these topics just walking around thinking like, oh, I wonder what Clark, Clark thinks of this or this is a good thing for something to think about maybe that you don't usually. And so I, I'm having to, I don't, I don't have to, but I'm going to move just because my apartment's raising the rent. I'm like, all right, that's too much. Find another place to move. And so apartment hunting, I think, a key thing everyone should consider when they're searching for an apartment is how convenient it is to do their form of exercise. So for, for me, and I'm, I bet for you, you like to run outside. So if you live somewhere where it's, you like can't run outside or it's dangerous to run outside, all those barriers are going to make you do that less often just naturally. So find I think that's a a good priority to have is somewhere where you have very few barriers to that exercise you like. So if, if you like maybe the stationary bike, maybe the apartment has like a really nice stationary bike in their, in their apartment gym. So on those days where you maybe you don't want a gym membership, you can just go there and, and any, anything that you can break down those barriers to get you active and moving 
is a positive. So I think that's important when, when house hunting or apartment shopping. Oh, I, I completely agree. I, that was pretty much number one thing that I was looking for when I was looking for a place to stay. Number one was proximity to work. Uh, no, I'd say it's proximity to a place to walk the dog and, and go out and run. So, and then it'd be proximity to work. I completely agree. The more barriers you can break down, the it's so much easier for you to be willing to go up and get it done. So I, I completely agree with that. Yeah. And that's why I thought you chose a good house there, town home in, in Baltimore, because like where you worked was sketchy as heck. Like I would not be comfortable running early morning around that area, but where you are in Baltimore, that's, that's nice. So it's a good call there. Well, I appreciate it. I completely agree with you as well. Has it gotten better out there or is it still like, do you, you always hear Baltimore like being one of the more dangerous cities or more violent cities? Uh, it has improved so much since the first time I was here. When I lived here right around five years ago, it was, it was rough. It was, it was, it was bad. Um, I, I mean, I, I could go into plenty of, anecdotal stories but it was it was pretty rough but now whenever I, I can go down to inner harbor i can walk to inner harbor and it's just it's been cleaned up so much there seems to be a lot more support there trying to keep the streets clean so it it's nice it it seems like it's it's trending in the right direction yeah i remember you telling me you were like walking out from work and you guys hearing gunshots like that's not, it's not a good, uh, good environment to run in with gunshots yeah, going they, around you. <laughs> they just put in bike lanes, right? Uh, not, not directly in front of my work, but like down across the street. And I was, I was impressed. I was like, they must be really trying to press to get this place cleaned up. Cause I, I don't imagine a lot of really rough areas having a bunch of nice bike lanes. So it, I think they're working really hard to get it, get it in the place that it needs to be. Yeah. Not to shit on your point, but when I was, I was interviewing in DC going into the Navy, they, they told us like, I guess that was like a, a rough area at the time. Now it's getting like last time I was there, everything's super new and, and nice, but they were telling us how one of the engineers bikes to work and he was stabbed while biking to work. Like, I don't know how that happens, but hopefully, uh, people keep the streets safe. So, so that's, that's a, a point I was thinking of finding a, a good place to live that encourages you to be active. Cause it's important. It's not gonna, I, I mean, I preach exercises. If you're trying to lose weight, it's not a good plan. Like you should focus on your diet, but for longevity reasons and being young and, and, and fit and mobile for as long as you can. Like it's important to have a consistent exercise routine. It's a lot easier to start younger than later. So if, I mean, if, if you're freaking 90 and haven't started and you're still chugging along, like I still think it's worth it. Try to try to be active. And I think every little bit helps, but the earlier you can start the better. All right. And then next, uh, next topic, what's your, what's your thoughts on bone broth? No, I'm a big fan of it. I, I've got no issue with that. How do you, do you just buy it in the store or do you make it? Um, I haven't gotten to the point where I made it, but I, I, I guess I've done it a couple of times. I'll take like, I'll make something in like, I'll make like a roast and I'll, I'll just make the, the broth, but I, I haven't done that very many times. I almost always buy it in the store. Do you, so how often do you drink it or what do you use yeah. it for? I would say I was doing it a little bit more often before. Um, now I, I just do it whenever it comes to me that like I, I want to make a meal with it, like a soup or a stew or, or, or I mean, you can kind of use it for a lot of different things. So what I, don't, a I give you a frequency. What benefits have, like, why do you think it's good or what have you heard about it? Um, I've just heard it was good for me. Yeah. And then I said it, it ended up being really good and that's how I kind of just stuck with it. Yeah. 
I hear I hear a lot about like inflammation and stuff like that, saying it is anti-inflammatory and just I don't know if it makes it. You can't just make it. I don't know. I really don't know much other than that. But I know uh, a lot of the health experts promote it, and it does. It doesn't seem to hurt. So I've been I've been drinking it. I, it's really easy to make. I just get the bone marrow bones, and then mm-hmm. you just I fill. You can use the crock pot. I have the, I just use the Instapot and do the crock pot setting, like the slow cook setting, and leave it there for like like a day. And then you're done. And it, the hard part is straining it because I don't have a colander. I probably should buy one, but I'm being cheap. And so like I'm finding like janky ways to to strain it, but then it gets it's so fatty that it gets your dishes like just caked in fat, and it's kind of difficult to clean. So I don't know. It's it's kind of worth the time because other than that, it's just set in and forget it, and you have bone broth. But then storing it. So the other the key hack here is it doesn't last forever right it's like good for seven days like even the stuff you buy in the store it's once open you should drink it within seven days and so i i want to freeze a lot but then how do you freeze it so they they talk about getting a bunch of mason jars but that's also seems expensive like i'm not going to buy a bunch of mason jars just for bone broth so i got like ice cube containers and so now it's even better than mason jars because you can have smaller servings so i can just pop open a few ice bone broth ice cubes and melt them and then have my bone broth whenever I want. So I, th- I think that's a good, good little life hack. Well, I think that's great. I used to, well, I used to make like roasts and, and kind of a big ceramic pot and then end up with a bunch of bone broth and I'd have so much that I'd end up just like drinking it. Yeah. That was kind of weird, but I mean, it's, it's just good. And it's I, I've heard it's got enough. Vi- yeah. It, kind of it's got it's got good vitamins it's got good fats in it so we've we've gone away into this country we've demonized soup no one drinks soup anymore it's a you know it's a staple american staple they should make make your bone broth make your soup like get after it bring it back let's bring Bring it back back. mj so you got it you got any uh topics you want to talk about over this month anything that made more came more clear to you over running or are you mm. are you fully healed? Are you still hurting? Um, I've I've got a little bit of side pain, and so I'm going back to the doctor eventually. I don't, I haven't set anything up, but um, a lot of the times I like to just kind of run through things, and I don't think I should anymore. Yeah, I mean that makes but, sense when you're like you're in college and it's your it's your big, you know biggest stage type thing you know you're not going to be on that stage again you'd probably push through more than now after post-college I feel like the more goals are just instead of seeing your you want to see how how good you can get but you're never going to get I don't know in different ways you're never going to be as dominant as you were in in college I feel like in that scenario in that competition that stage like those guys that's where the Olympians are, right? But now it's like a different, it's more longevity. I guess you can, there, you do have those ultra marathoners or people that are trying to break records, but I don't know if that's something you want to do. I, I, I've definitely been taking it a lot more easy, right? That's, it's been a lot, a lot. It's kind of been difficult for me to just take it really relaxed, but it's, uh, I don't know. It's it's difficult. It's a difficult feeling to not want to compete, to go out and beat somebody. But it, I've been trying to just have fun with it. Yeah, I guess that's I, the thing. Like, what is the goal? Are you, do you want to compete? And do you want to like? I, I guess that's the that's the kicker there. It's like you got to figure out what that ultimate goal is, and and realize like, hey, is it really worth pushing through pushing through all these injuries and possibly making them worse? Yeah. Yeah, and I I'll tell you what it's stress from work and it kind of adds up too. So trying to balance that with uh, just trying to want to to continue to run it's it's been tough, but I, I think it's a good it's a good thing to kind of keep your structure and remind you kind of like w- what it's like outside of just thinking about work. Yeah, and I definitely. I, I remember 
uh, back on the on the boat, just being overwhelmed by, you know, some some days you just have so much work to do, or or I screwing up and it sucks. I'm like, damn, what, why'd I do that? And uh, then you're just putting stuff in perspective. I feel like, and that's what I think running helps always help me is you get your run, you start running, and you're just alone there with your thoughts, and you can kind of detach and step back. And of course, like you want to do a good job, and it sucks when uh, I don't. For me, like it, it bothered me when I my messed up. But you put it, I put it in the big scheme of things and saying, hey, like still, still breathing, still, you know, every everyone I love is still on the earth or you know, lately. So you got all those things of, of gratitude and I don't know, that helped me, but I guess t- to each their own. That's Gary V's yeah. thing. Gary V says, you know, he, he cannot be truly like mad or, or, or anxious or disappointed when he, he wakes up and he realizes like all, you know, his kids, his parents, they're, he didn't get a, a, a text saying, Hey, they, they passed. Like that's, that's the worst fear. Right. So that's uh if you don't have any of that stuff going on, it's a damn good get day type thing. And I, I like that mindset, but I don't know. <laughs> that's, I love Gary Vee, man. Like Gary Vee's people are turned off by his like cursing. And I think he can come off a certain way if you first listen to him but like he is so consistent and just like his view of his love of life is i think is something to be admired yeah i i find that anybody that kind of has the if you want to do it go out there and go get it mentality i think i think that's been kind of been slipping recently and I, I feel like a lot of it's like kind of you want to f- figure out how to to go make it easy for yourself but if you want to go get something you, you got to go do it yourself i i completely agree with that mentality and i i think anybody that kind of preaches that passionately i'm i'm typically a fan of even if they kind of get on my nerves the way they present it yeah and that's and to speak more on that is uh Gary Vee is all about, you know, taking that accountability, getting after it, taking the ownership, but also realizing that failure is, is not something to destroy you. Like every, you're going to fail a ton. And some people, it's not a fear of fail. Like, yeah, to have a fear of failure isn't super healthy. So it's, it's more like, I also like how he, um, paints that because like for me, gosh, I've, I failed a ton in the Navy. Like I was I was terrible at nuclear power and that definitely got to me for a while and added stress. And I, it led to me, you know, not working out, just feeling like, Oh, I just got to study and, and study more and not sleep. And it just compounded. And, you know, if I had a, a healthier mindset towards that, I think it would have turned out a little, I would have had a little better time there, especially the first couple of years. So I don't know. I'm, I'm a big, and, and I was still listening to Gary Vee at that point. So it's hard, even if you're hearing all the, all this, uh, mindset stuff and, you know, exercise and eat well. And, and then, uh, it's another, another thing to implement it. So I think that's, that's why I love podcasts is it's that constant, constant voice in your ear. Cause even though I hear all these things before, it's hard to, hard to implement it. Like I would, gosh, in the Navy, they would, uh, leave out dessert they would always have desserts after every meal like breakfast lunch dinner always have sweets and you really only eat two meals a day because your the third meal is right before you're supposed to go to bed so you really should be in bed by the time the third meal is served but when i was studying a bunch i was like all right i'm gonna stay up into that period and get some checkouts done so i would stay up and after every meal I would go down to the wardroom and see like oh did they leave any desserts out because that was like my way of coping i was like oh i got it get that that small hit of of dopamine or whatever from the sweets and that was like oh that was nice and then i would go back and and grind and just i don't know it was, it was not good so i feel like so to summarize having that exercise routine having that that mindset of towards health and that uh good relationship with staying eating well, having a good mindset, staying active, staying fit, like 
I think it's, it encompasses all of what you're doing. It's not just, it's not isolated. So when, when, uh, people have those difficult times at work, that's almost, it's even more important to have a good workout to be eating well, because if you start letting that hard time at work make you come home and binge eat or, you know, go and just eat a whole tub of ice cream, that's not going to make it better. Like that's, that's just going to compound the issues. So it's, it's definitely hard. Like when work is, I did not balance that well. So like I feel for, for anyone with a, a rigorous work schedule to balance health and, and work. I don't know if I just, I just went on a rant there, but I don't know if, if any of that was helpful or not for anyone. <laughs> well, I think it's all about balance. You got to figure out how to balance your life. Um, I think even your dessert, dessert story made a lot of sense. I think you got to want having something small that's not going to like ruin your life. I think it's good, you know? Yeah, but I don't know. Like that definitely, I probably, I would have been better of getting more sleep probably would have learned better if I got more sleep or did instead of going and grabbing a shoving my face of those leftover desserts, just going and knocking out some push ups to, to get my energy going to get more checkouts. Like, so there's healthy ways yeah. to do it and unhealthy ways. That's for sure. And I think us working out training for a marathon, that's a healthy way. Yeah. All right, man. Any, any final thoughts before we close out May's recap? I think I think I'm thought it out. All right, Clark. Well, thanks for coming on the podcast for another marathon training update. Looking forward to to next month's recap. Hopefully, we've put in a lot more miles than this this slow month where we're kind of getting back in the swing of things. So, looking forward to it. See ya. Yeah. Thank you for listening to the Mike White Podcast. Be sure to follow us on Instagram and TikTok at Mike White Pod and subscribe to the YouTube channel. Y'all have a great day.